know what? You're right. I quit. Goodbye. No, fuck that. We gonna do this. We gonna do this. So on this channel, I analyze and critique Star Trek The Original Series, a 50-year-old show whose original creators and actors are mostly dead. My whole thing is that I analyze the episodes from a modern point of view, and I get this type of comment a lot. Yeah, that was problematic. It was the 60s. Kill yourself, you feminist scum. Okay, I'm unfairly strawmanning my detractors here, but I get this kind of critical apathy a lot. Just because a piece of media is old, we can't make commentary about it in any way? Since when did criticism have an expiration date? If we're asking the question, why critique old media, then we might as well ask the question, why critique media in the first place? After all, if I make a video talking about why a fairly recent movie like Knives Out is garbage, just kidding, that movie is amazing, does that mean Ryan Johnson is going to go back and change the movie? What difference does criticism really make? Am I just using YouTube as a creative outlet because my life is a black hole of depression and ennui? Yes, I am. But, like, other than that, why do this? There's a sort of narcissistic hypocrisy in film criticism. To make a movie or television show, it takes a lot of work over many, many hours by tons of hardworking people. The likes of me, a lowly mass communications major in my second year as a college senior, could never hope to make something like Game of Thrones. However, it would take me all of a few hours on my laptop to make a video criticizing Game of Thrones. The crew left a Starbucks cup on the set. Got him! I'm so smart! Like and subscribe! Buy my merch! Robert McKee once said, and I'm paraphrasing here, that stories are the primary and last vestiges of culture we have. It's a media-driven world now. I mean, if it didn't matter, do you think a million Thrones fans would have banded together to petition the showrunners to change the ending of the show? The media we consume matters, and we're allowed to criticize it. Think about if you went to a restaurant and ordered pasta and it came back to you and it was like, I don't know, too salty, or they brought you the wrong order. You wouldn't just sit there and eat it without complaint. Well, I mean, I would, but I'm a spineless piece of flotsam who avoids confrontation at all cost. But you'd ask them to fix your food, right? Humans have a visceral reaction to the media they consume, and to those of us who have studied media, academic criticism is a natural product. That's what nerds do! We talk about the things we know! So now we know why we criticize media. But how much is criticism worth? <laughs> Let's talk about something everyone's comfortable talking about. Bill Cosby. In April of 2018, Bill Cosby was convicted of several accounts of sexual assault. This was the result of dozens of women coming forward about their encounters with Cosby in the mid-2010s, recounting incidents from as early as 1965. When these accusations started to surface, the reaction was about what you'd expect. Why bring this up now? What will it change? What good will it do? Well, he's going to prison, isn't he? Now, a problematic TV show is not the same thing as a sexual predator. No one's going to put someone in jail for insensitively writing a rape scene. The person isn't real, so no one got hurt, right? Well, I've stated before that media affects its audience, in more ways than one. After characters like Temperance Bones Brennan and Abby Shudo featured on TV in the mid-aughts, suddenly the criminal justice field was flooded with women interested in forensic science, a field formerly dominated by men. Now, correlation may not equal causation, but cases like this make it hard not to believe that media affects our society as much as politics or science. As Oscar Wilde once said, life imitates art far more than art imitates life. And as playwright Jean Anu once said, fiction gives life its form. I mean, the whole reason we make our kids watch children's shows with obviously stated morals is so that they grow up to say please and thank you and not be total shitheads, right? So the reason we criticize media is not to change the past, but rather to change the future. So do you remember when the trailer for Ghostbusters 2016 came out and the internet lost its f***ing mind? Every mouth-breathing trilby with a WordPress account had an opinion on this one. Despite, you know, none of them ever having seen the movie. I guess they used their magic smart man powers to predict the future and knew that it would suck. And I'm sure the fact that it was all female had nothing to do with their disdain for the movie, right? <laughs> Since World Wide Web in memoriam, bad faith criticism has run rampant, with personalities like CinemaSins and the guy with glasses.com leading the charge. We saw it in the Great Twilight debacle of 2008, we saw it with Ghostbusters, and to be fair, Ghostbusters 2016 was far from a cinematic masterpiece. But calling something bad that you haven't even watched for yourself is the very definition of bad faith. Like, I know faith is defined as belief without seeing, but this isn't what they meant. 
Just because you don't like the lead actress of a movie because she's a dirty feminist doesn't mean the movie was bad, Sean. So just because criticism is a good and useful concept does not mean it can't be used for evil. It's a powerful tool that can be used to elevate or destroy art. Just something to keep in mind.